Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nicolo Floresca, the Inside Technical Sales Supervisor for the Filtration Division of John Brooks Company. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope everyone is safe and well. This is the first segment of a webinar series that aims to arm you with the confidence to tackle challenging filtration applications and make you aware of potential opportunities that can improve your overall process with a filtration solution. Today's uh, presenter is Anita Gupta. She is the business manager for the filtration division. Anita has over 20 years of experience and involvement with filtration technologies in water and wastewater applications. Those who have the fortune to know her already uh, know she is steeped in wisdom when it comes to the vast filtration landscape. We also have our seven outside technical sales reps and our filtration application specialists in the, in the panelists. Uh, so we have starting from West Coast to East Coast, we have Sean Marvin covering the Northern BC region and Northern Alberta region. He lives in Edmonton. Ross McGowan, he covers the Southern BC province as well as Southern Alberta. He lives in Calgary. Alan Nisolzi, he covers the whole of Saskatchewan and Manitoba, and he lives in Saskatoon. Scott Thompson, looking after the Southern and Eastern uh, and Northern Ontario. He lives in Hamilton. Sav Sony, who looks after the greater Toronto area and he lives in Toronto. Zenon Gluch, who looks after the Eastern Ontario region and also Western Camp Quebec. He lives in Montreal. Robin Poirier, who takes the balance starting from Eastern Quebec all the way to the Maritimes and he calls Quebec City as his home city. And then we have finally our filtration application specialist, Lynn Singay, uh, and she works primarily from the head office in Mississauga. Not right now, but uh, that's where we're gonna be heading soon. So uh, today's presentation will be recorded and its link will be sent to you as well. Um, a little housekeeping before we begin. The mics will be muted by default for the duration of the presentation. So please use the Q&A icon on the Zoom meeting control bar on your screen to submit any questions you might have. We'll be monitoring the Q&A chat box and we'll be answering the questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Uh, and again, thank you for those that sent their questions in advance. We'll be also sending those at, answering those at the end of the session. In uh, respecting everyone's time commitment and the one hour schedule allotted, if there's any questions left unanswered, after the one hour period, we'll be addressing them in a follow-up email to the audience. Again, Thank you for attending. And with that, I turn things over to Anita Gupta. Thank you, Nico. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, when I say welcome, uh, as Nico mentioned, uh, I'm really passionate about filtration. So passionate that I'm welcoming you into my home today. You know, you could probably see uh, at the back. Uh, so why are we talking about filtration? Uh, so, oh, well, look, spelling mistake right there. <laughs> um, so what do we want to learn right there? Um, if we can get all these three objectives, or at least some of this at the end of the presentation, uh, then you know, we have learned. There is more to a filter system than screen size or micro rating or the line size. And the second objective that we want to get at the end of this is, if filters are plugging, that means they're working. It means the fluid has dirt. And if filter system works and operates differently than theirs, you know, some other client, some other customer, then it's okay. We just need to understand all the parameters before ripping it off and putting a clone system as theirs. Right, so these are the messages that I would like to convey. Uh, before we get further, let's some cold hard facts about filtration in general. In my experience, uh, almost 25 years, I'd say filtration is often the most misunderstood and sometimes even neglected piece of any project or plant. The reason is straight, you know, it's okay. It continuously plugs, right? Filtration, if installed, is done incorrectly and can always be improved. Most of the time, uh, you know, we get thrown into buying a filter or go and fix the systems just based on the product manual. You know, how real is that? 
And worst is when the plant managers or engineers are asked to get better efficiency from an existing system and, and you don't have any budget for it. All right, let's see what we can get out of it. Let's talk about why, why do we need to filter? Well, it sounds like a common sense. Uh, it's, it's, it's protect equipment. It's improve product quality and appearance and safety. It's remove harm. It's simple, you know. To me, it's a common sense. Bottom line, it saves money. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? We'll talk about the difference between separation versus filtration versus purification. We'll talk about basics of filtration and within basics, uh, fluid, particles, filter media, filter ratings. We'll talk about science behind filtration mechanism and filter applications parameters at the end. We'll end with that. Okay, are we good? Let's move forward. Separation, filtration, purification, all seems like the same thing. Um, yes and no, it is. Filtration is a type of separation. But what is uh, in, in, when we talk in filtration world, where do we use the term separation? Separation uses physical characteristics such as density, mass of solids to remove them from the liquid. This, this seminar is more about solids and liquid separation, okay? So you will hear a couple of times I will use the word solids and liquid. Examples of separations, you know, your clarifier, your sedimentation tank. So, you know, look at on this side, you know, when you have a sedimentation tank, might be adding some flocculin, uh, coagulations. So that's a separation device. Uh, a grit, vortex type system, you know, more very commonly used um, uh, in municipal application upstream of any wastewater treatments that you will see grit or vortex type separator. Um, a centrifuges, a decanter type systems. You know, these are some examples of the, the centrifuges you will see it there, right? This is a basket style centrifuge. This is a decanter style centrifuge. And lastly, a centrifugal separator. I also commonly call cyclone separators. So these are the devices I will put them under separation equipment. So what is filtration then? Filtration is where there is filter, okay? Filter is a barrier where contaminants are removed from a fluid stream by passing it through a permeable medium. Basically here we're talking about size exclusion. Uh, so, you know, there's a permeable barrier, you know, you have the, the, the feed, filter screen or filter media could be of any type of filter media and which we will talk later further in the presentation. So a barrier is a filter, okay? So that's, this is the difference between separation and filtration. Now what is purification? Purification gets into when we talk specifically about uh, pharmaceutical type applications, wineries, breweries, uh, drinking water, we get into purification which uh, you know, next step to filtration. Uh, for example, when you are, in addition to removing particles, when we get into removing toxins, pollutants, microbes, such as protozoans, viruses, bacteria, uh, and what do we use for that? Um, things like uh, ozone, uh, things like UV system, ozone, uh, chlorine or, 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 or things like very fine filtration systems uh, uh, like the one um, in the middle that's an ultra filtration membrane systems. Okay, so now we know the difference between separation, purification, uh, separation, filtration, and purifications. Let's move on. Getting to the basics of filtration. Um, a filter system has, uh, in my mind, has three main components. There is fluid, a dirty fluid, and a clean fluid. And then, of course, there are contaminants, right? Contaminants are, uh, uh, you need to understand the contaminants, what are different sizes, what's the nature of the contaminants, how much it is, and then filter media. So we'll, we'll talk, you know, all that about it. Let's talk about fluid. All right. 
you know, in filters, the reason we're talking about filters, the reason we have filters, because uh, there's dirty fluid and needs to be turned into a clean fluid. What is a dirty fluid? Dirty fluid that has dirt. What is dirt? In filtration terminology and filter, we define dirt or recognize dirt as something that's undesirable in the fluid. Uh, we say, uh, okay, there are suspended solids. Uh, there is high turbidity. There are a lot of dissolved solids. That's dirt. Dirt can be in the form of uh, dissolved solids like salts, uh, metals, um, dissolved iron, dissolved manganese, uh, even dissolved mercury, um, gases, uh, high amount of carbon dioxide, uh, you know, uh, high amount of oxygen, um, or some dissolved ions like sodium chlorides. High organic, that's dirt, okay. High color, you know, there are times maybe we don't like that colored water. It needs clarity. Microbes, that's dirt, that's unwanted component. And then what is clean fluid? Clean fluid, which is clarified or and classified, right? That has, um, basically it looks uh, clear to human eye. Uh, so that means the filters can do two functions, clarification function and classification function. Oops. Um, so if you look at this on the right side, right, they, there are sublevel solids, dissolved solids, and turbidity. And here it shows that by turbidity uh, reduction, uh, we could get a, a clarity. And how that is done, um, uh, let's talk further about that. Now, at the end, uh, filtrations, uh, the contaminants and particles, the dirt, that's what dictates what type of filter method you're going to use, what type of filter are we going to use, how a filter will behave. Contaminants dictate that. How? So let's understand the contaminants. Uh, to understand the contaminants, let's first talk about the size of the contaminants. The size of the contaminants, um, you know, you could talk about that in the micron rating, inches, sometime, you know, when you have an intake screen, you're removing particles down to, um, you know, one eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, half inch, or we talk millimeters. We talk microns. Another unit of measure for particle sizes, we can talk in molecular weight cutoff. When we're talking about removing very, very extremely fine particles uh, that uh, you can't measure in microns, we talk about the molecular weight, right? That takes us back to our grade 10 chemistry class. Uh, just to give you a perspective of uh, the different micron size, um, a human eye, uh, can see 40 micron, you know, depending on, I know, at my age, I can't even see without glasses 150 micron. <laughs> uh, but also if you look at um, red blood cells, that's down to five micron. Bacteria is uh, between one micron, uh, two micron, and some bacteria are even smaller than that. Now this uh, chart, or I would say the filtration spectrum, uh, shows the relative size of different particles that are unwanted depending on what fluid we're dealing with. For example, um, if you need to remove giardia and cyst, you know, we're looking at one to 10 micron, where, you know, we're, we're removing some viruses, endotoxin, or just uh, particle as large as beet sand, uh, you could see we're talking 100 to 1,000 micron range, right? And then there is a molecular weight of that. Um, you know, of course, we're not talking about the detail of different processes here, because this seminar is more about the, the basics of filtration. Uh, but in the next uh, couple of next seminars, we'll, we, can, we will talk in more in details. Now, uh, continuing with talking about the contaminants and particles, so that was about uh, size of the particles. Now let's look at particles, shape and nature, uh, because shapes and nature really will impact how a filter system will behave and how, of what type of filter system we're going to, we're going to install. 
particle shape and nature, uh, specific gravity of solids, uh, density of solids, and the nature of solids is extremely important in understanding what type of filter system we need to install and how a filter system will behave. If the particles are hard, if they're soft, uh, they're round, they're spherical, flat, fibrous, and there are, there, there, there are forces, uh, attraction forces within the particles or the, the forces between the particles and filter media. Now, continuing with the particles, let's talk about quantity, how the quantity of the solids or particles will impact your filtration selection or, or how a filter will behave. So how much solids or particles are in the fluid? That's a very big factor. How much, how much needs to be removed? You know, we need to figure that out. What needs to be removed? What percentage needs to be removed? We can talk in percentage, in parts per million, parts per billion, and the range of the particles in sizes. Do they range from uh, 0 0.01 micron to 1,000 micron? or 0 0.01 micron to, uh, you know, one inch particles. So that's all impact how the filter will perform and how do they behave in fluid and on the filter media. Now, continuing with the filter bases, um, most of the time, a filter manufacturer or a supplier or filter engineer is asked to provide uh, fluid analysis. What we're looking at in solids and liquids separation is total suspended solids, TSS, and particle size distribution. So just to give you an example here. This is uh, one example of one of the fluid samples that we have received. Uh, um, so in this case, um, they had thousand parts per million of total suspended solids and this was the particle size distribution ranging from 0 0.4 micron to 300 micron and the client asked uh, well i need to reduce it 50 percent okay so we know this is thousand parts per million we need to reduce it to 50 percent that means i need to provide a filter system that will remove you know, at this range, between 10 to 20 micron. Okay, all that will remove 500 parts per million. Hmm, do I have a filter that can remove all that 500 parts per million? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I need to go two, three stages of filters, right? Um, so that's how particle size distribution help, or that this distribution also tells me that bulk of the particles are in the range of between tw 10 to 20. So I need to select the filter accordingly. At the end, the golden rules of filtration, filter only as fine as absolutely necessary, no, fi no finer. Uh, just, just an example, if you are, if, if we have spray nozzles in, um, in, in, in our pulp and paper, uh, in a paper mill and spray nozzles have the orifice size of thousand microns. Uh, what we recommend is, uh, you know, go four or six size smaller, 250 micron filter. There's no need to go any finer than that. Oh uh, yeah, you can, uh, but there's no need. If you go more finer, you'll end up with a very large filter system or an incorrectly sized filter system, which is constantly plugging and become a pain because the filter at the end is not purchased to remove solids from liquid, but actually to eliminate those problems that those solids will cause. That's why we only need to remove those solids which are causing the problem. Because, you know, at the end, filtration installation has to make sense, right? Now let's talk about different type of filter media. Filter media can be, you know, uh, divided in three main categories. Uh, surface filters and depth filters. As you know, it shows in the picture, surface filter looks like it's just one layer and depth filter has a depth. So surface filters uh, will, you know, let some deformable, softer particles squeeze through, the fiber might go through, and depth filter will catch that. But then at the same time, 
there are times when your depth filter is actually acting like a surface filter because if all the particles are so large and they only make a layer at the top of surface filter then the depth filter is also a surface filter so it depends how the filter behaves another type of filter media is adsorptive filter which adsorb the contaminants because the filter media will be a charged media you know you, it's created by adding some filter aid and then it will attract those finer contaminant particles and will you know ad get adsorbed for this type of filter to perform best um, the, the, the fluid needs to stay retain on it for some optimal amount of time you know, you can't go with a very high velocity, very high flow rate per unit of area because it works on surface attraction, right? And this is mostly used for clarification process and is most effective in very, very fine filtration. Just so here are some examples of surface filters, you know, like your vibrating screen, bag filters, especially mesh type filters, uh, basket strainer, Y strainers. Um, you know, just being a surface filter, there's a very limited chance of, uh, sorry about that, very limited chance to uh, capture that. Oh. Um, and they have a tendency to build surface cake, okay? Depth filters, depth filters create a torturous path. You know, it's like having multiple layer of basketball net, right? Basket, uh, a depth filter will have a higher pressure drop, right? It will have a uniform uh, constant or uniform density. If you look at this uh, bottom one here, so if this is the depth of the filters, this is an example here at the bottom is a uniform density. And a graded density means when the outer pores are larger and as it goes to the interior of the filter media, the pore gets smaller. And uh, sand filters, multimedia filters are an example of uh, depth filters as well. Okay, let's understand a little bit more. Filter media, okay. Continuing with the filter media, um, it could be a cleanable filter or disposable filter, you know basket strainers, Y strainer that had cleanable media, you know, the basket gets dirty, you take it out, wash it, put it back, right? Could be metallic, could be plastic. Uh, most of the filter cloth or filter papers are disposable type media and these are different polypropylene, cellulose, uh, cotton, uh, you know, you can make filter bags, filter sheets uh, with using these type of filter media. Bonded type filters, uh, they are also, there are some cartridges out there. Uh, membranes. Membranes are uh, different materials, PVDF, polyether sulfone, uh, microfilters, UFS ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, reverse osmosis. These are all filter media. Sand or multimedia, right? That's another type of filter media. And charge media like resin, DE, coated media. All right, so we talked about the different particles, different filter media, and let's talk about filter rating. Every filter media is rated based on its capability and its efficiency to remove certain particles, right? A filter media, uh, like a screen, could be perforated, then it's able to remove quarter inch particle, one eighth is perforated, or half inch particles, so uh, as such. Could be rated based on mesh sizes. You know, it could be 20 mesh, 40 mesh, or micron rating. Molecular weight cutoff, as we just mentioned earlier. Um, just going back to there on the right hand side, there's a chart, so it's a simple conversion. Um, you can convert millimeter into micron versus mesh and inches. Now, continuing with the filter rating and particle remover efficiency, uh, most filter media, especially bags and cartridges and some screens are rated. Um, and there's a whole lot of confusion out there about the filter rating. So let's say, uh, what is a filter rating or filter efficiency? Uh, filter efficiency is measured in beta ratio. Beta ratio is percentage of particles larger than the filter rating 
removed from the fluid stream, right? So let's say if a filter is rated for 100 micron and it removes 90% of those particles, we will call that filter is 90% efficient, okay? Filter rating uh, could be nominal or absolute, right? Nominal rating is uh, falls between 30 to 98% efficiency. Absolute rating, something, you know, higher than 98% efficiency. Now, can a filter which is absolute rated also nominal rated? Uh, yes, of course. For example, if a filter is rated 15 micron for 99% removal, it could be removing 50% of four micron particles. Right? So it's, it's both nominal and absolute rated. Just a, a beta ratio, um, as which is a unit of measurement for filter efficiency. A filter is called beta 1000 if it has a 99.9 .9 efficiency, beta 5000, 99.98% efficiency, and so on. Okay. A beta ratio is actually, as a matter of fact, uh, in my experience, is not a real measure of how a filter will perform in your application, right? Because beta ratio is calculated by manufacturer by using spherical particles. Um, a, a common dust is used in the lab called Arizona dust. So, you know, how real is that? So that's why there are a number of um, um, uh, uh, no, number of things we need to look at before uh, selecting a filters or while fixing a filter. Another type of filtration rating is we talk about microbial retention. Uh, microbial retention is instead of a beta ratio, we talk in terms of log reduction value. Log reduction value relate to the microorganisms removal, uh, viruses, bacteria, removal or um, deactivation. For example, one log reduction is a 90% removal, two log reduction, 99 and so on. Um, this, there, there's, there's a formula to collect that. Now let's continue with the surface filtration um, mechanism, uh, uh, mechanism of filtration. Filtration is either happening by sieving, that's basically a surface filters, right? It works well for larger particles. Now to understand the surface filtration better, let's talk about surface area. If the surface filtration is really important, we optimize on most surface area. And the next comes open area, percentage open area. So uh, surface filters can be a mesh, you know, depending on how thick fibers, wires we're using, that will affect the percentage open area. And to have the best filtration, we want to have as much as open area as possible. And there's a way to calculate the open area and a perf screen as well. And of course, we're not going over um, how to calculate that. But just to give you an idea, um, more open area we have, more surface area we have, better our filter will, will work. Um, and then, there are, there are, in terms of surface filters, we have slotted screen, mesh screen, wire screen. Depth filtrations, you know, depth filtration, similar as, you know, surface filtration has open area, depth filtration has the void area, right? More void we have, more particles will be adsorbed or settled in this torturous path, right? And of course, surf, some particles will be retained at the surface because remember, depth filter can also act like a surface filters. Another way this filtration happens is by cake filtration, cake formation. So it could be a single layer or a surface filters and a cake is actually artificially created by adding um, a filterate and that cake itself become a filter. So that's another way of filtration. Now let's talk about the science behind physics or physics of filtration. There is a mechanism when the particles are coming close to the filter media, there are multiple things happening. There's diffusion, interception, 
inertial impaction, electrostatic attraction, or gravity, or hydrodynamic force. But all these different sized particles, they are captured using different physical membranes. Me mechanism and everything is happening at the same time. It's not that the one filters behave differently than the other filters. What is the direct interceptions? Basically, when the particles are going along the flow of the fluid, right? It works for mostly larger particles, larger than 0.2 micron. Inertial impaction where, you know, you have an impaction created by the mass of the particles. Right? So it works for the larger particles, basically for the particles that have some mass to it. Um, and then, um, you know, that's another one uh, picture showing on the right. Um, Brownian movement is basically the movements happening too fast in there. Uh, that works for mostly lighter and the smaller particles. Um, gravity, when you have the mass and heavy density, some particles will just attached to the filter media that way. And hydrodynamic effect is when the filter gets captured in the, uh, on the side of the filter media. And the last but not least is electrostatic attraction that we you know, talked about previously. There is a charge on the filter media and that attracts. It's really, really important that to get the best performance out of a charged media is that the fluid stays as long as possible. And even, even our carbon filter falls into that. Carbon is actually more of an absorbent media, not necessarily a filter. It's not a size exclusion. Now, uh, before we end that, I wanted to really talk about what is flux. We hear these terms. We talk about fluoride and flux. A flux is a flow per unit of filter area, per unit of time, uh, mostly work for when we talk about the membrane and the surface filters. Uh, to have the best performance out of any filter, we need to keep a flux very low. Go slow, it's better. You're going to pack more solids, you're going to use all the void spaces, you're going to use all the open area. Uh, so slower is better. So gallons per square foot for these are the common. Um, uh, so example for lower flux rate is, you know, when the, the fluid is coming at a lower flux rate, uh, most of the void spaces will be used. But if the flux rate is very high, everything will be packed at the surface and you are not using and your, your filter will plug very quickly. So sometimes that's answered. Sometimes answer to a simple question is why my filter is plugging so quickly? Oh, well, maybe you are putting a flow rate very high and you were doing it based on the line size, not based on how much of the open area or the void area you have in your filter. Last, which is everybody's favorite question is what is the dirt holding capacity, right? Not an easy answer. Dirt holding capacity of a filter is not only a function of the amount of filter area in a filter, it is also dependent on what type of filter media are we using, surface versus depth, flux rate, very important. Nature of solids, if you have heavy solids, high density, they will just settle down. You know, they might be even removed in your vessel, right? As soon as it hits the baffle. Total suspended solids, particle size distribution, and your open area ratio, you know, pipe size to filter media pores. Not the open area percentage, this is the open area ratio. So for example, if you have a two inch pipe size, what is the open area in there? And the ones that get, gets into your filter screen, which is a one eighth inch, make sure, you want to make sure that the total open area made out of all those holes in that screen is at least four times of the area of your pipe size. You know, uh, we can talk more about this if anybody's interested. Um, there are formulas, there are ways to calculate that. Last one I want to touch on it. Um, you can select a filter definitely not on the line size. And you say, oh, I have a two inch pipe. I need a two inch strainer. No, it's going to work. We need to understand different variables. What are we filtering? How fine we need to filters? 
what is the TSS, how much it is, what is the particle size distribution, and of course the flow rate, the design pressure, working pressure, and how often do we need to clean it? And at the end, we need to understand, you know, what are the any other specific applications requirement. In filter sizing, um, pressure drop. We need to really talk about before we end this, uh, because it's a barrier, it's a screen, it's a depth filter, it's going to cause a pressure drop. If you can talk to any filter uh, engineer, uh, they all think in terms of the clean pressure drop and recommended change out of clean up pressure drop. If they're not, they should think like that and a system pressure drop. A good filter should be sized based on one to two PSID clean pressure drop, right? You don't have to ask them, it's understood. And filter should be sized in such a way that the time period between the clean delta P and recommended change of delta P should be as long as possible, right? If we say this bag should be changed after it hits a 15 PSID pressure drop, that means this bag should be sized in a way that this maximum delta P does not reach in an hour. It should take as long as possible, two days, three days, four days, depending on the requirement, because that might lead to how much filter area are we packing, what type of filters are we putting in there. Because, you know, that's where all the experience, knowledge, science and arts of filter selection comes. I guess um, that's the end of um, the presentation I have. And then um, we can open the questions for, um, please mm -hmm. start. Um, Nico, uh, do we have? Questions yeah, there? so we have one question from the audience. It, it was already answered, but it was pertaining to the copy of the presentation. Um, so okay. a copy of the, the presentation itself and a video link will be sent to everyone. Okay. Um, there is a question from uh, Matthew. Uh, and after the filtration, can fine particulates re-aggregate together into larger partic particles inside the pipe? If so, is a four or six times smaller size factor sufficient when there's a lot of piping length between the filter system and the applications or would it be prefer preferable to use a 10 times factor? Um, thank you, Matthew. There are multiple <laughs> questions in this one, one question. Uh, yes, so the answer to first one is can fine particulate re-aggregate together into a larger particle again inside the pipe. It depends a lot on nature of the particles and we have actually seen this happening. So um, that's why it's really important to understand the nature of the particles and the shape of the particles. If the particles are flat in nature, they tend to stack up on each other, right? Uh, there have been a lot of work done on if the four to six times smaller size factor is sufficient when there is a lot of piping length between the filter system. Now, I would say if the particles have higher density, then the four to six times is, is um, uh, sorry, if the particle, um, yes, so four to six size is sufficient if the density is higher. But the, if the density of the specific gravity of the particle is low, then you might want to go with the, uh, you know, 10 times. If it's possible, use the 10 times. Um, and then, uh, yes, the cop, we will put that on YouTube. Um, and uh, Nico, I think uh, you had some questions uh, that were sent before. Yeah, so we do have some questions that were sent ahead of time okay. as well. And uh, um, one of the questions was, uh, when using filtration, is there a difference in design parameters for air or gas filtration and liquid filtration? Um, yes and no. When we talk about, if we're talking about the application parameter, um, just like liquid filtration, uh, we need to understand the, the flow rate of, you know, instead of we're talking about um, liters per second or gallons per minute, here we're talking about CFM, SCFM. And in terms of gas, you know, we need to convert that based on their molecular weight. Um, 
however, how they behave uh, in terms of mechanism, they behave, the particles behave same as how the particles behaving in the liquid um, by the inertial impaction, uh, by, you know, this in Brownian movement. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, you know, pretty much the same as uh, what we're taking into account. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so there is uh, another comment um, from Louis. Um, I would think of injecting coagulant before filtration. Oh, um, absolutely. Absolutely, Louis. Um, the coagulation before filtration, if that is possible at all, that should be done. And then you can basically are making it settle down and you could use the sedimentation. Um, but however, sometimes happens that um, depending on the application, coagulation is not possible. Um, but that's the, that's the actually the real. Um, oh, there was one another question that just, uh, just went. Nico? Mm -hmm. It disappeared. There was another one. Oh, yeah, it was just pertaining to the, a copy of the PDF. Oh, yeah. no, there was so, another one. Uh, yeah, so let me just see. Yeah. I don't... Okay, yeah. No, I, I, I think that's it for now. But uh, the, okay. in terms of the other questions that were presented ahead of time, um, one, okay. of the, so one of the... There was, was one asked, question from Mahmoud. Uh, for part of for part two of this webinar, is it possible to receive a copy of the presentation in advance? This will help better understand uh, the ask subject questions. and ask questions. Uh, most, I think we could do that. There you go. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah, we can arrange that. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then, um, do you have any other? So one of the questions raised earlier was the: uh, Are there guidelines for? PPM limits for filtration media types or options is, and uh, that's one question. So if we want to go, go that one first. Yeah. So the guidelines are as the, the person who's asking the questions use the word guidelines. They're literally guidelines. Um, yes, manufacturers do provide guidelines. Um, in literature, you will mostly see irrespective of what type of filter that is 200 parts per million. Um, now, something that's unwritten, that's basically strictly based on my experience, I would say, if you're using a, a filter media for 200 parts per million, then you better not have a filters finer than 200 micron. If you're filtering something 10 micron, right, then your parts per million incoming should be less than 10 ppm, right? Um, manufacturers are not, they don't really openly advertise that, but this is I'm saying, in my experience, I've seen if I'm using a filter media for 10 micron, incoming parts per million should be less than 1015 parts per million. And uh, another question from the same gentleman, is the flux rate given per cartridge or media or total cartridge per media? Uh, flux rate is, uh, this is the term that's actually coming from membrane filters. It's a flow per unit of area per unit of time. Um, so it works very well for um, calculating the membrane surface area and also for the media filters, how much of the, you know, the wide diameter of the media filter pack we're going to have. Um, However, it, it, there are also guidelines for using the flow per unit length of a cartridge. Uh, it is very common to not exceed more than five gallons per minute per 10 inch cartridge length. Okay. But then it also we need to go back to, you know, the experience of that, take a look at the nature of solid, how much solid is coming. You know, if you are putting 500 parts per million of solid, you might want to go actually a lot lower flux rate. Remember, lower the better. Slowly you pack, the faster you'll go. Thank you, Anita. Uh, so another question is the size of the fibers used in making of the filter media, uh, does it have an impact on the filter's life? Uh, and uh, if so, is there a price uh, relation to that? Uh, very good question. Does the size of the uh, filter fibers use? Uh, yes. So when we, let's say we're making a screen, or, or, or 
cloth bag filters there. Um, if you are using a very fine filtration, if the media is very fine, the fibers diameter will be very, very fine, right? Does that impact the performance of the filter media? Um, if you're using very, very fine fibers, it will impact in two ways. One, it gives you the ability to have a lot more open area, but at the same time, it makes the filter fabric weaker. Uh, just, just an example, um, if you have a 100 micron filter screen mesh, you know, if, if I'll get a chance to come meet with you, everybody in person, I, like, I always like to bring the samples of the simple mesh and perf. You could see a 100 mesh looks so finer. Um, I don't know if I could use the word like, like, like the pantyhose is very, very fine. And then a 20 mesh is the, it's stronger because the wire are thicker. It's like your patio door mesh. So the media get weaker, but your total open area, void area increases. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next question coming up is, uh, can you elaborate more on classification and clarification? This is a two, two and one question. And how can you define adsorptive filters with respect to those terms? Very good questions. Um, Classification versus clarification. Classification is a size and size exclusion terms where you're classifying it. So you have two jars. One has particles ranging from one micron to hundred micron, and the other jar, which has has the filter fluid, have the particles only. You know, all the particles are smaller than fifty micron. So that's your classification. Clarification is more to do with the uh, turbidity removal, more of the visibility when you are um, clarifying a liquid. Uh, that works, uh, that is a very common requirement in your food industries, in, um, in, in wineries and breweries. Uh, in terms of, uh, sorry, what was the second part of the question? Uh, how do you define absorptive filters with respect to those two terms? Um, so, um, adsorptive and ab absorptive filter. Adsorption when happened when we're creating a charge on it. Um, for example, you have the filter sheet in a filter press and it's coated with the DE. You have created a charge on it and the particles are packed in there. Just, you know, just like a flux rate, when you go very, very slow, more retention time fluid particles have on that, better clarification will happen there. Okay, thank you. And the uh, final question is, is there a relationship between nominal and absolute rating efficiency? Um, yes, so any, any filter that is nominally rated is absolutely rated for something. Um, do suppliers or sorry, the manufacturers do that? Um, not necessarily, sometimes they only uh, doing it for uh, nominal rated. But for example, if a filter that is rated, absolute rated for uh, five micron, right, it will be uh, nominally rated for removal of absolute rated mean it's removing all the particles larger than five micron, 90, 98% or more. But at the same time, it would be uh, nominally rated for even finer particles, you know, one micron, because it's going to remove some, per, some percentage of the uh, finer particles as well. So yes, a filter can be both nominally and absolutely rated. Actually, some of the manufacturers, if you look at the literature, they do publish it. They do publish the rating at, um, as a, beta, a rating at beta 500, beta 1000, beta 5000, or beta 5, beta 20. So beta 5 and beta 20, that's basically nominal rated. So you could see that right in the literature. Sure. Okay, um, and if any of the attendees have any more questions, we'd be ha happy to answer it. We still have six minutes, so. Um, 
Um, and also our, our technical team is on standby. And um, if anybody has any questions in, uh, would you like to be explained in French? We have um, two gentlemen, Robbie and Zenon, uh, they're, they're bilingual. Lenin Senge, who's our application specialist, bilingual, if anybody has any questions for our technical salespeople, uh, uh, please uh, let us know. Or if anybody would like to add, any of our technical salespeople would like to add something to this. Nico, or this, uh, I'm not able to see that, that chat. Any questions? No, if any of uh, our technical salespeople would like to add anything. Nothing at the moment, no. Okay, so. okay. oh, there is. Oh, a... uh, actually, sorry, <laughs> we have one more question. Uh, you talked earlier about using, uh, this is uh, another question from Matthew. You talked earlier about using coagulant to help in a separator, but would it be adequate for wire mesh filters? Oh, Matthew, sounds like we need to, we need to talk a lot. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, wire mesh, you know, how, how fine? right it will why because sometimes what happens uh oh four mils uh coagulant when it when it's create flock the flocks are very softer when the flocks get very softer they have a tendency to squeeze through the wire mesh so there are multiple things that we need to we need to consider is four mil uh may not be may not be enough there will be a different type of media might have to put there Yes, uh, it. So I thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, uh, Mike has a question. Is there a media that is better suited to using with flocculated particles? Um, uh, yes. So there, um, the media. If you could divide, we could divide a filter media as woven and non-woven. Right. So mesh is a woven media. Right. Um, if the media is, if you, if on the top of the woven media, you have a cake buildup, right? Um, um, cake filtrations, then you could use the woven media as well. But the non-woven type of media is better suited unless you, we are using membrane filtrations. Uh, for example, in uh, drinking water treatment, it is very, very common to reduce TOC upstream by adding uh, enhanced coagulation. And after that, we use membrane filters, which are basically surface filters. But they're extremely fine that the flocks, they do not go through the membranes. Okay. Okay, uh, still have a couple of minutes, but uh, in the event we don't have any more questions, again, just a reminder that we will be sending a copy of this pr presentation as well as a YouTube link uh, to share with your friends and colleagues afterwards. So, okay, um, I would think we care. We're okay, Nico. You're saying we have a couple more minutes. I don't know. My clock's saying we're ten minutes past past an hour. Oh, what's my what's my <laughs> clock saying? Oh, I th I think your clock's fast. Then I don't know. Oh. <laughs> so I do you talk fast as well? Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. I, I guess that about wraps it up. Thank you again for your attendance uh, and look forward to the next uh, uh, section of the series. So thank yeah. you again for your time. Thank you, everybody.